how are you? Good, thank you. Uh, Brian Williams, one of the experts from Toyota. And we're here at the, what it used to be, the Toro Marine... Uh, Marine base. Base. Yeah. I mean, huge place. The wrong way, if we were to translate this into a highway, it would be like a 20 yeah. <laughs> lane highway. So a perfect place for uh, testing this uh, brand new car from Toyota. Um, the RAV4, but this is special uh, or a new version of it, right? Yeah, this is a new grade. And so for 2016, the RAV4 is a minor life cycle change in our fourth generation. The SE grade is an all new grade for RAV4. And it falls between our XLE and our Limiteds. It's kind of like in the Sienna family, it's an SE premium. Yeah. A lot of the features the Limited has, uh, but it has you know a price range kind of in between the two, XLE and Limited. And I think customers are gonna like it. It's unique interior, exterior styling, but it also has sport tune suspension. So it's more than just an appearance package. So this is already, I mean, the RAV4 is already one of the most popular vehicles in the Toyota family, right? Mm -hmm. And with this, I mean, you're gonna attract even more people because not only the design is pretty attractive in the outside, but it has like, I'm not, we're not gonna say it's a sports car, but it has like some sport features, right? Absolutely, so this segment, the small SUV segment is the largest growing and the fastest growing in the country right now. So there's a lot of interest in the small SUVs or compact SUV segment. And yeah, the this, this segment's versatile, it's meant to be a capable a versatile vehicle. Some are more off-road, some are more on-road, but you can make one that has more performance, you know, better handling. So you can go a lot of different ways, but this SE grade is going to be good. It's about 10% of the fitment of the cars, and it'll bring in those buyers that are looking for that appearance, but also the handling of it. Yeah, and uh, you mentioned this is a mic cycle uh, refresh, but you guys actually did a lot to the car. Yeah, so it's deemed a minor life cycle change typically have those every two to three years in a vehicle until the major life cycle. Um, so while it's a, uh, deemed a minor, there's a lot to it. It's front and rear exterior changes, some pieces on the side, interior all new materials, more premium, more soft touch padding, and also more consistent trim, uh, matte silver and black trim. So it's more premium look and feel on the inside. You also have new safety technologies, Toyota Safety Sense P is gonna be standard on the limited and limited hybrid available on the XLE, XLE Hybrid and SE. You also have bird's eye view camera available, which is an awesome around view and perimeter scan, and multiple other things. Park sonar front and rear for some customers. Blind spot monitor on more vehicles. So ultimately a lot more safety, convenience, technology, and the, the looks as well. And, and all that in a package that is, uh, I mean, the price is pretty attractive. I believe it starts around 24. Yeah, prices range from the low 24s to around the low 33s. And that goes from LE front wheel drive all the way to hybrid limited. Yeah. So you just mentioned the hybrid limited. I mean, that's also an, a, a new addition. So for the first time in this, it really is a segment only hybrid option powertrain. So it's on our XLE or limited vehicles, you could get a hybrid powertrain on it. Um, at least for this model here, that's what we're looking at. So it gives what we call more of a no compromise to the small SUV. It has more horsepower, more torque, better fuel efficiency and range, almost the same cargo capacity, and actually more towing capability than our conventional gas all-wheel drive counterpart for the RAV4. That's great so, because you have the electric engine and all that, so that brings a little bit of extra uh, torque, force, horsepower, how does that work? Absolutely, so in this case, it's standard all-wheel drive with intelligence, oh, or what okay. you hear is AWDI, and that's on our hybrid Highlanders currently all-wheel drive. It's a very similar system on this, on the, hybrid, on the RAV4 hybrid. It's basically our typical engine and electric motor up front for our hybrid synergy, but we add a separate hybrid motor or electric motor on the back wheels. So it's independent motors on the front and rear, and the rear motor kicks in for added acceleration, traction acceleration, added cornering stability, and also for slippery roads. So it's great on-road capability with the ability to kick on all-wheel drive when you need it for traction, whether it's accelerating, cornering, or slippery roads with rain or snow. So even though it's a hybrid, you, know, you were able uh, to package the, the batteries and all the electric components in a way that you don't lose a lot of space for the passengers or the cargo area. Absolutely. It only goes down, I think it's like 2.8 cubic feet, 
which is not that much. Ultimately, still in this segment, the segment ranges for cargo capacity behind the first row seats, with the second down from around 66 to 74. Our gas hyper or our gas rav is one of the highest at 73.4, even with the sunroof in. Yeah. The only other competitor that's above that, they only beat us when they take the sunroof out. Uh, if they have it in, they're actually down around 68. So you can see the difference already on that. But ultimately, 73.4 for our gas, and the hybrid ones are only 70.6, so only a little bit different. A little, yeah. I mean, a, a little box. Yeah, something. ultimately, and it has 250 pounds more towing capacity, which in this segment, it's a good little addition for. But ultimately, more towing, almost the same cargo. It's 0 to 60, which we're experiencing, about 0.9 seconds faster than its all-wheel drive gas counterpart, too. Yeah, so ultimately, 8.1 seconds is our approximate 0 to 60 on the, on the hybrid. RAV4, full battery charge and everything. So taking advantage of the a lot of space here, the Toro base, we're gonna do this. They set up this outer cross, and uh, again, it's not a sports car, but it's it's a compact SUV, but with a lot of character now. So we'll see. So are there uh, adjustments to the suspension and other things uh, to make it and this SE grade? Yeah. So the SE grade that we're in. First off, all RAV4s for 2016 receive all new shock absorbers front and rear, retuned coil springs front and rear. The SE goes a step further in that it has unique tuning to the shock absorbers to give it a more sport or dynamic handling compared to the other grades of RAV. So in this case, it's not just the sport appearance, it also handles a little bit more sport oriented. You feel that sometimes you give up a little bit of ride comfort. Ultimately, it's better ride comfort than the 15 model year in all grades, including the SE, but the other grades go a little step further in ride comfort. And we, do you have a driving mode also, right? Yeah, so on this one, since the non-hybrid, we're going to have a sport mode or an eco mode. The sport mode ultimately gives you more orientation towards acceleration. Um, if you give a car full throttle in any mode, it's going to give you full throttle. But in sport mode, it basically prioritizes throttle in your first third travel. You get more out, out of it with less input, basically. Okay, so we just tried the, where are the modes for? Modes are all down here in your lower oh, Sony yeah, console. Yeah. So you have eco mode and sport mode. The only thing different on the hybrid versions is you also have an EV mode. EV mode will give you about 0.6 miles and speeds under 25 miles an hour. Okay, so we did it in the eco mode and let's try it now in sport mode. hit 60 not because the car can do it but we have a turn here so that's why we didn't hit 60 but uh, I mean it, it's fast I mean for, for an SUV yeah it's a 2.5 four cylinder so it's uh, the same we had in 15 model year on the gas versions it's about 176 horsepower 172 pound-feet of torque naturally aspirating so it holds its own amongst the competitors obviously there's people out there with turbocharged options that yeah. are much added cost but uh, in this segment, that holds its own for the most part. It's a pretty good car. Six-speed automatic transmission, a sport shift mode. You can put it in on any of them, gas or hybrid. And the hybrid, actually, when you put it down in sport mode, it actually has a, what we call sequential shift matic. So that'll give you, while it's a CVT-style transmission, it'll give you six simulated range and yeah. air ranges. And it actually makes it a lot more linear when you're accelerating. Is this also a CVT or is it just a regular uh, standard automatic? Standard six-speed automatic. automatic. Okay. In this segment, you have some people still with the automatics. Um, it's very reliable and good, decent fuel efficiency. Some people are going to CVTs, and some people are going towards eight or nine speed automatic transmissions. Um, ultimately, the acceleration fuel on this, especially the, the hybrid version, is much more linear in my opinion, and I think customers will like that. Other CVT styles out there will give them more what people call rubber band yeah. feel. It takes a little bit to get to full power. It feels delayed, and there's no shift points. Some people have added in simulated shift points to make it feel more like an automatic and natural, but ultimately, the, especially the hybrid version when you drive it, it's going to feel a lot more linear than that. So. Well, thank you very much for your time. We really enjoyed it. Uh, congratulations, and we're going to keep enjoying here the activities of the store. Thank, thank you, Ryan.